Hello, I'm Rebecca Seaman. I'm the conductor of Sacred and Profane Chamber Chorus. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our online concert. I hope you're doing well. Songs of Health and Harmony. The piece we just sang for you is Stacy Gibbs' powerful arrangement of the African American spiritual There is a Bomb in Gilead. This piece deals with both physical and spiritual healing which I think we need so much right now after this year of a major pandemic and confronting the racial injustice in our country. 
All of the music that we're bringing to you tonight also deal with the subject of healing, including a Haitian chant, a Hebrew prayer, and pieces by beloved composers Morton Lauritsen and Arvo Parrott and others. Since we can't sing together in real space right now, we've continued to meet online every Monday night and really continue to deepen our musical community as singers in Sacred and Profane. So we've created two different types of pieces for you. One group we call remote pieces, which are pieces that will accommodate for the time lag that happens when you're singing together on um, internet platforms. The other type of pieces we call virtual choir pieces, where singers will sing, will record themselves singing their own part and then send those videos in and they get pieced together to become the little mini films that you see here. And I'm so grateful to Pete Gontier for all of the tireless work that he committed to creating these little mini videos for you. We have program notes for you that you can see the link for on the screen below me or go to our website at sacredprofane.org. Those notes contain information about the pieces as well as texts and translations. So thank you again so much for coming tonight. We hope you enjoy the music. In my synagogue, when we're not doing Zoom services, we chant the Anna Elna prayer for healing that Moses said for his sister Miriam. We sing it repetitively while people line up in the aisle to tell the rabbi the names of loved ones to include in the Misha Berach prayer, another prayer for healing. The rabbi then recites all the names and chants the full Misha Berach, layered over the singing of the congregation in a particularly beautiful moment that I will enjoy all the more when it can happen again. In the piece you will hear tonight, this Misha Berach prayer is spoken rather than chanted, but it mirrors that layering of the two prayers. The first version of this work was a round that I created for the Justice Choir songbook. The chant melody for my synagogue is the first part in a three-part round. This new version for mixed chorus incorporates all the melodies from the round. Since I composed it specifically for live remote performance, it embraces the latency or lag of the internet by using the latency as part of the aesthetic. As a result, it is almost entirely aleatoric. You will hear melodic fragments repeated asynchronously, with singers purposely not singing at the same time as others on their voice parts, creating a swirl of sound. Finally, I want to mention that I have adapted the Anna Elna prayer to be inclusive of mental and emotional healing, in addition to physical healing. Thank you to Rebecca and to Sacred and Profane for bringing it to life. Na el na rufana la nu rufuat hanefe. Oh, 
אחרותינו, רחם יצחק קור, תן שרה רבקה אל ולאב, ויברך יביא רבי החולים, דוש ברוך הוא ימלא רחמים עליהם, חכימם ולרפא אותם, להחזיקם ולחיותם. אך להם מהרר השלמה, רפואת ומוכנת, וחזק את ידי אר חולי ישראל ויושבי תבל, בעגלה ובזמן קריב אמר ענה אל נא רפנה לנו רפואת הנפש. ענה אל נא רפנה רפואת נפש. אל נא רפנה לנו רפואת נפש. This is a Haitian voodoo folk song called Fueo, uh, arranged by Stian Shalman. Something we all know is that music has this wonderful power to expose us to new histories and cultures. And uh, so I'm just going to share a little bit about the history and culture of Haiti that shaped, um, that shaped the piece you're about to hear. Thank you to Mambo Marie-Rose Francois, Rebecca D. Sager, and the Ethnological Museum of Berlin for their info on this subject. And to start off, um, Haiti and voodoo has a history that, like the U.S., is pretty dark. It has its roots in slavery. So uh, first, the indigenous Taino people and later Africans were enslaved on the island, but those who escaped fled to the mountains, helped each other survive, and really mixed um, cultures like uh, spirits, remedies, music, things like that. And that's what became voodoo. It spread... Uh, amongst the enslaved peoples as a way to elevate the spirit, find dignity in the face of oppression, uh, and really kind of persist despite the extreme hardship of, of the time. 
Um, so that's that's really what voodoo is. It, it leverages music and the power of the breath and the voice and the rhythm of the drums to create that space where people can find the freedom and the dignity of spirit and um, and that persistence. And um, the unfortunate thing is that it has been suppressed so much over the years that it sort of today, I think, has this kind of negative impression for a lot of us in the West. But as the arranger of Fuego, Stan Schalman writes, I want to share a quote from him. He's seen how the music at Voodoo Gatherings, quote, creates a sense of warmth and security in a community that helps people become completely free to express themselves, revealing the true dignity of the human spirit. So given that rich and painful history and the sacred power of the voice in Voodoo, uh, it's our privilege to be able to sing this music for you. And in doing so, build appreciation and respect for voodoo and for the people who practice it um, and really reckon with the history that it came from. Thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy Fuego, arranged by Stian Shalman. Yeah. Hey. 
Hi, I'm Amy Vermiller, Chairperson of the Sacred and Profane Board of Directors. I would like to thank you for being a part of our presentation today. Whether you're a longtime fan of Sacred and Profane or you're tuning in for the first time today, we're glad to welcome you to our family and we hope you enjoy what we've been able to accomplish during our remote rehearsals this fall. We were fortunate to have received a matching gift of $2,500 for our end of 2020 fundraising campaign, and I'm thrilled to announce that we've already surpassed our initial goal of raising $2,500 and have extended our goal with a challenge of raising an additional $2,500, and we are well on our way to reaching that goal. Thank you to all of you for tuning in today who have contributed to our fund already, enabling us to continue to make music during these challenging and strange times. Your outpouring of support affirms that the work that we are doing provides tremendous value for our singers, our audience, and our community at large. The next piece we are singing for you is by a rising star from Southern California, Dale Trumbor. I had the pleasure of working with Dale several years ago when she was kicking off her career and won a young composer's competition. I knew then that she was going to go on to have a powerful voice in the core world. Dale wrote this particular piece in 2020 as a response to the pandemic and the necessity for choirs to quickly pivot to virtual performing. This piece expresses our desire to wish others well, to hope that you're healthy and safe and staying sane at least as much as is possible right now. Here is Dale Trembors. I hope you're doing well. I I hope Thank you so much for coming to tonight's Sacred and Profane concert. I hope you're doing well, Songs of Health and Harmony. We have two more pieces to sing for you. The last one is Morton Lauritsen's beautiful setting of James Aggie's amazing alliterative poem, Shore on the Shining Night. But first, we're going to sing for you Arvo Pert's Beatitudes. Beatitudes was a piece that was not actually written to be sung remotely the way we sang it. We chose to sing it together in real time online. And since it wasn't conceived with that idea in mind, it was definitely an interesting experience for us. We tried coming at this piece in a number of different ways. First, we decided to try to sing it rhythmically aligned because we felt that singing it more remotely and, and embracing the remote quality of singing and not trying to be synced up um, didn't allow for us to hear the text or to hear the vertical quality of the chords. But then the result of trying to line up didn't really work and ended up just creating a rather stiff and robotic interpretation. So we didn't like that. We abandoned that idea. Then we tried adding in a keyboard part to um, bring in the original organ line, which is a drone that sort of appears in a chromatic line throughout the work underneath the singers. 
but that didn't quite sync up or work well either. So we abandoned that idea also. And instead, we just decided to go back to the idea of really embracing this as a remote piece and not necessarily trying to line up our rhythm, but just to sing the lines together. And we ended up deciding that that felt the best. It felt more organic and true to the interpretation of the work, even though it's certainly not what Arvo Parrott originally intended for the piece. Arvo Parrott, I think, is one of the most beloved composers of our modern day. Um, you know, for me, I have a number of friends across musical dispositions who aren't classical musicians themselves. And when they hear that I am a choral conductor, often the first thing they ask me is, do you ever sing Arvo Parrott? He's the composer that they know and love the most. I think it has to do with the meditative quality that his compositional style creates that can feel so warm and relaxing and healing. Um, Arvo Perret writes in a style that he calls tintinabuli, where he overlaps uh, scalar voices against other voices that are arpeggiating chords. And so you alternately um, have consonance and dissonance as those two parts sort of interrelate. He tends to get grouped with a group of composers that are called spiritual minimalists or sometimes holy minimalists. I think because of that beautiful, warm, meditative, spiritual quality that the pieces give. Um, and we at Sacred Profane love Parrot's music and return to him often, and I'm so happy to bring you his Beatitudes now. So thank you once more for coming for tonight's concert. We really do hope that you've enjoyed it and continue to enjoy it and that you have a wonderful holiday season. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh. Sure. 